So I heard a quote once that said, everybody loves maps, they just don't know it. And I can't remember who said the quote, but it's true, it really resonated with me. Um, everybody does love maps. I remember as a girl, I was being, a young girl, I was being the one in the car pulling out the paper map and wanting to help with the navigation. And I know uh, young kids right now don't have to do that anymore, but there's something magical about a map. Even as kids, you know, treasure maps where X marks the spot, there was something really, truly magical with maps. And when Kent asked if I wanted to present for Steam Engine, I said yes, but I want to present on this day because it's GIS day. And really, it's GIS day. So for 20 years, um, we have been celebrating GIS day. And that's a, it's an international event where people can share what GIS is and how it can change the world. And that's what I hope to share with you today. So what is a GIS? A GIS is a geographic information system. And what that is, is it starts with a map, um, a base map, and you add data layers over the top, um, and then you can analyze the data to make better decisions. Geographers use what's called a ge geographic inquiry process um, to ask geographic questions acquire those resources, examine the data, analyze the data, and then act upon their findings. While I'm not going to have time today to take you through the whole process, I want to focus on the first question, act, or ask. So um, ask, it starts with asking geographic questions or spatial questions. Um, what exactly is a, a geographic question or a spatial question? Um, it's a question that has a location component to it. For example, um, where's the best place to build a windmill farm? What are the crops that will be most affected by increased rainfall? What impact does climate change have on migration patterns of geese? So you may or may not know that Brown County has its own GIS. So let's say you are moving to the area, you're new to Green Bay. You might be interested in you know, where you might want to live. So you can add different layers to the GIS to start to examine that data. So if you haven't checked this out before, I'd encourage you to do it. It's a great place to get started exploring with GIS. Let's take a look at um, some of our everyday heroes right here in Green Bay. So um, Nick Pelletier, he's an agronomist with the, the county. And um, just one moment. So he's a, an agronomist with Brown County Land Conservation Department. He works with farmers to implement conservation practices to reduce the amount of erosion, as well as sediment and nutrient runoff. So his summary of how do you use GIS, I had reached out to some area GIS users, and he said I use GIS to prioritize our efforts to the cropland that will provide the biggest bang for the buck. So that's a spatial question right there. Um, you know, how do, how can we get the biggest bang for the buck uh, in our cropland? And the map on the left, what that is showing is, um, this was a map that he submitted, areas in red, it's a little hard to see, but areas in red are the areas that they would focus their efforts on for getting that biggest bang for the buck. Michelle Belanja, uh, who is uh, an SNC grad, graduated in 95, which I didn't even know when I reached out to her. Um, she's a crime analyst for the Green Bay Police Department. And she says that GIS is a critical tool in law enforcement and analysis and is used for a variety of tasks from assigning patrol cars to certain geographic areas to identifying hotspots. 
So the map that she submitted is a map that they use for um, mapping nuisance areas by district so they were, know where to uh, target their resources. Phil Olinger is another St. Norbert grad from 14. He's a GIS manager for Robert Ely and Associates, an engineering firm in Hobart. And he uses GIS to assist the engineers in things like site planning um, and mapping wetlands. But in this example, which I thought was just really cool, uh, they used uh, imagery from a drone and helped them calculate the volume of the stockpile in a quarry. So those were just some, you know, lo what I'd like to call local heroes, local GIS heroes. But GIS can be used to solve problems at the, the local, national, and global scale. Here's a good example of, at the national level, how GIS is being used by Walgreens, this really cool app that's out there, um, to help with the flu index. So they, they keep track of people that are buying over-the-counter medications to determine where the highest incidence of the flu is taking place, and that's where they target their efforts for um, stockpiling uh, flu vaccinations. On a global level, uh, GIS is being used to, just another example, to map um, the rise in sea level. And 40% of uh, the population in the US lives along the coastline. So being able to map the sea level and see what effects that's going to have on the coastline allows us to better prepare for those kinds of emergencies. So going back to the geographic inquiry model, I guess what I would, my plea to the audience would be um, for all of us, but especially our students um, that are out there, to keep asking those geographic questions. Um, for parents and educators, you know, help our students explore the geographic data that can help us answer some of those questions. And most importantly, um, to act upon the findings that we, we can see with this data. And I'd like to finish with one of my absolute favorite examples where I think GIS has really made a difference in the world. Um, this is a, a tool that was, ca it's called the Ushahidi in Swahili. It means testimony or witness. It is founded for crisis response, uh, election monitoring, and human rights reporting. In 2007, it was used to help with the uprising and rioting as a result of the Kenyan election crisis. In 2010, it was used to help with the humanitarian efforts after the de devastating earthquake in Haiti. And through text, SMS, and tweets, Ushahidi was able to help determine where to concentrate crisis response and relief efforts. Today, it's also used for environmental monitoring, citizen journalism, free and fair trade media, public service delivery, global health initiatives, and more. Their aim is to build a replicable, scalable, and sustainable software platform to empower people to raise their voices and help organizations listen and respond better. So GIS, I can't think of another technology that is doing more to help change the world. Thank you. Okay, now we've got the Q&A time. You can't skip that. Mm -hmm. By the way, it's my favorite. does everyone see uh, Christine's fantastic shirt up here? Yeah. Do now. Literally the entire world. Yes, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's totally awesome. So, questions for Chrissy up in here. So, um, how do I get access to this and how does that work? Well, actually, so there is, you can access, um, there, there's a lot of different GIS platforms. There are some free open source platforms. Um, one that is used worldwide and is the most, in, uh, most widely used is called uh, ArcGIS is through Esri. Um, 
And if you go to uh, ArcGIS.com, you can get started for free. There's paid for versions, of course, but um, anyone can start for free. And actually, because we're doing this event, I have five licenses that I can give out. So first five questions, come see me afterwards. And I'll... <laughs> yeah. I think you have four licenses. <laughs> More questions for Chrissy? Do you teach at St. Robert's? Do you go to UGB? But what's your research in this? Um, it, it's in this. Uh, yes, I, I'm the director of academic technology, and previously I taught in the teacher education department instructional technology classes. Um, but I did a couple of things that I was very fortunate to do and really got me interested in this. Um, it started with geocaching, you know, and, and GPS. My background's in uh, math and computer science. Um, but I was able to uh, attend the T3G Institute at ESRI, which is the headquarters for the GIS software. Um, that's Teachers Teaching Teachers GIS. And so it was a week-long institute that was amazing. Um, and then also uh, got my certificate in teaching spatial literacy from um, the University of Redlands, California. So um, you brought up geocaching, which is, yeah. we had talked about that a long time ago, and that's yeah. super interesting. Um, I'm not sure if everyone knows what that is. Could you enlighten us? Sure. So uh, if, if you're looking for a, a fun activity to do, if you haven't done geocaching, geocaching.com, um, it is a great activity for all ages. To me, I feel like it's the best marriage of technology and the outdoors. You know, I think sometimes technology gets bad rap because it's seen as like an indoor activity and you're behind a screen, but geocaching takes you outdoors and it will take you to places that you never would have thought going to. And, you know, it, it's free. You can use your phone if you want. You can buy a GPS, but it's, it's free to do and you would be amazing what is hidden out there. You actually find treasure. Yeah, so that, that's what it is. You're, you're basically treasure hunting, mm -hmm. you know, so you're like a, you're like a pirate. Yeah. Looking for treasure. Yes, you are. And following a map. Right. <laughs> it's totally cool. Um, who's done geocaching? Okay, we have a very competent group here. Very good. All right. More than me. I did not. I, I've not. So, any last questions for Chrissy? Yeah. Uh, the top. Yeah. Okay. Why not? Uh, <laughs> how, how can we? You know, use use this as a tool to kind of educate those who are in the power of actually making decisions and helping them make data driven decisions. It's sort of it seems like it's kinda of like, okay, academics get it, right? That's good, but let's, you know, move yeah. on to the top of it. Um, a good place to start that I would recommend is the Brown County GIS. Um, it, it's an amazing they have amazing resources on our land information website and I, I have to um, toss out a thank you to Jeff DeMay, who is our Brown County Land Information Officer. Um, he teaches a GIS course at St. Norbert in the spring, but is, has just been incredibly helpful. But starting there, um, because we have local resources that you can experiment with, and then, um, you know, if you want to go to the arcgis.com site that I suggested, um, you can do a search on there. When I talked about the layers of data, um, you do a search like you would a Google search for the data that you're interested in, and you would be amazed at just the thousands of data sets, hundreds of thousands of data sets that are freely available to use in a GIS. Great. Thank you very much, Chrissy. Thanks.